Would you believe the iPhone is now 16 years old? The rise of Apple's device played a role in the decline of Research in Motion's BlackBerry, RIM, which changed its name to BlackBerry, then pushed ahead in a new direction, focusing on software and cybersecurity. But it's been a grind. And today, the company said it's exploring options, including a possible breakup of the business. Veteran journalist Jackie McNish has covered the company for years. She's also co-author of the book Losing the Signal, the untold story behind the extraordinary rise and spectacular fall of BlackBerry, which she is now getting the big screen treatment in a new Hollywood movie later this month. Jackie, it's good to see you. Thanks good for here, stopping John. by. And obviously, we've had lots of conversations <laughs> over the years about the business of BlackBerry, and you've literally written the book. Does it surprise you to see this announcement that they are now looking at the next chapter here? I think the only surprise is it took this long. Mm. I mean, this has been a company searching for a new direction once it was got, got out of the smartphone business, and it officially ended that about a year ago. Uh, really focused on sort of um, the next wave, if you will, which is automobiles, which you could call smartphones on wheels, you know, and that's where they wanted to get in there with their QNIC systems, with the security and, and play a bit, a bit of a broader role on the, on, the, uh, on, on the auto sector. And for a while they had things going, they, were, they signed up a deal with, with Ford Motors, but now you've got the big giants moving in, Google, even Apple is moving in this space, and who knows, maybe Amazon as well, just the big Silicon Valley players. There's really no room, I think, for BlackBerry with that kind of competition. There, there's that part. There's also this big push they made into, into cybersecurity. They made an acquisition. Uh, but when you look at the trends, there are some other players out there, and y you have to wonder if their sales team was having a, a, a challenge on that front as well. I think if you can't scale big, like the big players in Silicon Valley, it's it's not going to be a good, strong, long-term play. Mm. If you get it right, as we learned from BlackBerry, they'll move in. That's what Apple did, you know, and moved in on the on the BlackBerry space. An, an object they said they would never make, they never wanted to make a smartphone, but because BlackBerry succeeded in it, they just went in there and you know the rest is history. And what do you think about the, the strategy? Obviously, uh, John Chen, who has um, a long tracker, track record in, in technology, a well-known CEO, he came to the table, has always had lots of enthusiasm, um, and, and on the surface was always sticking to a very clear message about the transition for the company. What, what is, aside just from the competitive realities you talked about, what else have you observed over these last few years about the business? I think the key factor here today is shareholder support. And they always had the long-term support of Prem Watsa, who is instrumental in stepping in and basically buying enough shares and other, other securities to bolster the company in, in a difficult time where it reinvented itself under John Chen. Now shareholders are getting very frustrated. If you recall last year, Prem Watsa barely got reelected onto the board last year, and that sent a real signal, I think, of shareholder disappointment. We have some new players, new shareholders, some new hedge funds that are involved now, and that you know indicates, it's only an indication at this point, that we're gonna see a little bit more agitation and pressure on the company to do something to, you know, to make something of the assets, their portfolio of software. Well, we, uh, our David George Kosh got a statement, a brief one from the co-founder of Fifth Delta, which is a UK-based hedge fund with a notable stake in the company now, saying they are supportive of these actions to potentially unlock some value through this strategic review. I guess it opens the door to what do you think of these options that might be on the table for a company like BlackBerry? I think that, you know, selling selling assets looks like that's where this company is going to go. I think it's going to be really hard, given their size, to play, you know, in a, in a market that they accurately pinpoint in as the next wave, but these, they have been overtaken by much bigger players. Okay, let, let's just talk about the evolution of the business, too. And uh, as we said, you, you wrote the book on this, and I think uh, this was such an exciting story for so many people in Canada. We sometimes get insecure when these technology companies get big and then stumble. But the story of uh, Mike Lazaridis and, and Jim Balsley building up this business and where things maybe ultimately took a wrong turn outside of Apple just seeing that you can be successful in the smartphone business? Well, I think that in the end, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong for mm. BlackBerry. The two CEOs were not really, co-CEOs, Mike and Jim, were not really speaking at each other towards the end. They had that huge patent lawsuit. They had the issue with um, backdating a stop, stock options. So there were a lot of fault lines, if you will, in the organization at a time when they really needed to be unified because once once Apple realized how the potential of a smartphone 
you know, it, re, it reinvented itself and reinvented the, the, the telecommunications relationship by, by, you know, giving an exclusive agreement to a carrier to, to invest in what needed to be done to upgrade the networks. And I think that, yes, Mike has been faulted for not recognizing um, the threat that that posed immediately. But I do wonder at the back of my mind, even if they had pivoted and quickly successfully moved, to the touchscreen phone, could they have really competed with Apple? I mean, this is a phone when it came out was called the Jesus phone. You know, their loyalty yeah. among customers is huge. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting, you mentioned the legal squabbles. I remember for BNN covering the NTP case in Virginia, which it predates the iPhone, but there was obviously a lot for a company like BlackBerry to be thinking about. Now, I do wanna just make a, a quick nod to the movie, which we've, we've spoken to some of the talent that are in this film about it. It's not quite your book. Oh no, it's not even, <laughs> it's not even remotely our book. <laughs> and they've done- Inspired it, by? Yeah, inspired by, <laughs> loosely based on, which is fine because, what, what, you know, if they had been religiously uh, adhering to our plot line, um, I think the, you know, 10 people would have showed up, but that would have included my sons, my husband, and maybe my <laughs> Aunt Heather <laughs> in Vancouver. They have completely reinvented this story with so much energy and excitement. There's a lot of laughter in this film. It's a lot of fun. It